righty then. Got got ourselves going tonight. As long as the serious clouds hold out, we should be able to build an image for a little while. This is going to do a meridian flip pretty soon. I'm shooting in the north tonight. At least for, for now.
Hello, Mark. I had uh, some high clouds coming in. I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be able to actually acquire data here. But we'll see. Supposedly it was going to be clear tonight. Let me go look at my sources again. Yeah, there was transparency was supposed to be average. Seeing was supposed to be good. Below average transparency after midnight. So maybe it will be good for a few hours at least. I don't know. I probably should be shooting in the north. Good, Robert. It's always an adventure. This is NGC 2403 up in the north. It's in the constellation of Camelopardalus. It's only 8 million light years away. Yeah, that's, uh, for me, it's been a lifetime of research for uh, in astrophysics. It's always something new to learn. Finally took some flats this morning after two years of collecting data. And it's amazing how nice those are. Make your makes your images that much nicer. Gets rid of a lot of the gradients and the vignetting and the dust donuts. It's the first time I've done that. I processed two two objects today with it. In fact, I'm using the flats that I got this morning. In, on this uh, image that you're looking on the screen right now. So there's no dust donuts showing up. And it's fairly flat field all the way out with uh, not too much gradients. There's some, but not a lot. Cleaned up quite a bit. So I just happened to have a nice clear sky this morning. Pointed the scope up in the, <coughs> kind of towards the west a little bit. So I had a homogeneous light source. And it took 30 frames at a thousandth of a second. I happen to be good enough. But I gotta suspect I'm gonna have to make a, do a little more than that when I don't have a good flat re uh, light source. But anyhow, I was kind of surprised how well it did.
thing about taking flats though is you gotta as soon as you change anything in the optical system like take the camera off and clean a filter or something you gotta take a new set of flats because the dust donuts will have moved <laughs> that's the only um, caveat with doing that it requires a little a little more work but if I can get that down where I can take uh, put maybe a light table in the observatory on a wall and I can put that part of my imaging sequence to take a bunch of flats at the end of the night or something like that then that might work out so that's another project to work on Don't forget, if the uh, screen looks fuzzy, change your YouTube settings down in the right-hand corner there to HD, and it'll look better. Just in case it came up at low res, you can change it down at the bottom and set it to one of the HD formats. I'm actually broadcasting in 1440p. So if you can render it like that, it would look just about what I see. Otherwise, uh, 1080p would work good, too. Let me see what this guy's doing. I'm going to take another snapshot with the Canon here. i got a wide-angle 10-millimeter lens on my Canon T3i, piggybacked on the 10-inch, so I can kind of keep an eye on the sky conditions. And I've got this high Cirrus rolling through, excuse me, right now. So I'm going to take another snapshot of the sky there. I'm going to hit the meridian here, uh, flip point it, probably this very next frame, because it's not going to be able to finish it before it's going to want to slew. It just finished the eighth frame. It should be evaluating uh, a meridian flip, because I don't think it can finish the next frame. Let me see what it's doing here. Let me turn on my hair. Yeah, pretty soon. I'm surprised it didn't uh, flip over. Let me check. Yeah, okay. Flip it now. It's going to flip. So you get to see, uh, it was sitting there, it was it had a timer on, I was going to do it in about 90 seconds, but I told it to go ahead and do it now. So it's going to do a meridian flip. And uh, let me see, I can turn on the display on the screen here and there we go so now you can see the scope is a little bit past meridian i've got it set up so if it's within 30 minutes i th think that i have maybe a house or two lou fakes his house yeah okay well, I'm very sure yeah definitely i had the uh
I believe we have met as well. All right, so the scope is slewing. You should be able to see it in the uh, lower right-hand corner of the YouTube broadcast. The um, NSN won't see it because I'm only showing them part of the screen. <coughs> But it's uh, flipping over, and then it's going to auto-center the scope, and then it's going to restart the auto-guider and continue on. Let's see. Robert, are you still in Michigan? Yeah, I got a little bigger aperture. It's uh, I got I got to cover a full 10 inch aperture. Not that that's all that much, but I'm still. And it restarted the auto guider automatically, automatically, which is good. And it's gonna looks like it's going to uh, start up. Ah, okay. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been to the Oakland meetings. I've been to just about everybody else's, but I don't think I've ever been to the Oakland meetings. Well, let's take another preview here. This should be with the camera. The camera will be flipped now on this uh, view. I want to see what the sky 
cloud cover is doing here. Should have a better view towards the, a little bit towards the north northwest now. Yeah, that's not looking very good. I'm looking through a lot of high stuff. I don't know. Don't know if this will be worth continuing on or not. Last night was a better night. Transparency was better. I think we're having a bit of a challenge here. Amazingly, I'm actually still getting images through this junk. Background's probably a little on the bright side. For those who 
those on the network. Um, no, there's nobody in there anyways. Nobody's in my NSN channel, so we don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> But let me maximize this. Uh, so you see this high cloud stuff we've got here. That's what I'm shooting through right now. Shooting through high cirrus. I might be getting a little bit through that hole there, but. In any case, it's not, not ideal. But given the conditions, this is actually coming out kind of nice. I wanted to get a couple hours on this one. I'm using a tool called Astro Toaster to be stack in real time. It basically uses Deep Sky Stacker in the background, but it has some rudimentary um, processing so you can stretch the. Uh, you know, stretch the uh, image a little bit, maybe change some hues and increase the blacks or whatever. I may have to take some more flats tomorrow morning. Although this is doing here, I'm going to oversaturate this so that I can see if the background's actually not too bad. Compared to what I usually get. <clears throat> There's a lot of modeling in this um, this galaxy. Yeah, I had a problem last night too. I, my focus was, uh, for the first time in a year, my focus was goofed up. And it's only because I moved my filter around uh, and didn't check it. Uh, so I wasted about an hour and a half of data acquisition in the, in the evening and realized when I zoomed in on one of my frames that it was a little bit out of focus. I had to, I could just see the central obstruction so I had to go out there and uh, manually focus the primary scope or primary camera and then uh, refocus the uh, guide camera to match so it seems to be pretty good tonight in fact I think I'm gonna check I would expect my CC inspector to Show me a little bit of anomalies, but let me let's see here. Take a look at this. 
My wife's getting killed in her video game. She's in there. Yeah, just a half an arc second off on collimation, but that just that's just temperature related. I think the curve is pretty pretty minor too. Oops, I wanted to go with the 3D plot here. Yeah, we're pretty flat, pretty good. Very too good. System's working pretty good. It's been pretty good since I bought it two years ago. I put it all together, bought all the components, put it together. It's probably running the best it's uh, right now. The only, the only thing I have an issue with is every once in a while I get some type of glitch on my on my uh, drive system. It goes out about 16, 20 pixels, or 16 or 20 arc seconds, and then comes back. I'm not sure what's causing that, whether I got a burr on the gear or whatever, but guiding's doing really good tonight. Let me see. I'm gonna. Change this to four pixels. Yeah, we're we're less than a pixel. In fact, I'm I, of course it tracks really good when I'm pointing north. Uh, but uh, my total RMS is 0.26, so it's we're, we're tracking really good in the north tonight. I'm tracking the south, so not quite as good, but good enough. Hi, George. Oh, howdy. Yeah. How you doing tonight, George? Eh, fine. Sleepies. <laughs> I always eat late. I only eat one meal a day, and then when it's a big one, it knocks you out for hours and hours. <laughs> I I know you like to chase weird things, so I thought, okay, let's check out what... And you got skies, holy crap. Yeah, kind of. It's actually clear, like up this way for. I don't know. That's not gonna last. I got some high cirrus. Give me, give me some uh, milky sky right now, but I'm still capturing data. So. Are you gonna get any of this intra to a rain that's coming between tomorrow and Saturday, or are you the one sending it to us? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I haven't looked at my longer term weather forecast here. See 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 it's telling me I'm supposed I'm most I'm cloudy right now, even though my clear sky chart says I'm supposed to be clear all night. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I'm getting I don't rain. see any precipitatory action there till Saturday. On, thing. on Saturday. Oh, okay. It it ends well here's the screen clip there. Oh, okay. Saturday is supposed to be the biggie here. We're supposed to get like a, I don't know, inch, maybe two. Yeah, My okay. pool is full. I mean, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm beyond curious now. Like, what's gonna happen? Oh, look at this precipitation, 100 percent. What's that? Uh... Yeah, we're getting rain on Saturday here. But I, yeah, fi yeah. I find what amazing is it says it's mostly clear here right now. But it's predicting mm. partly cloudy for the rest of the night, so I don't, I don't know. It must be these high haze, because my other source says it's going to be clear all night. Let me go to astroph astrophysics here and see what that says. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it says uh, uh, transparency is going to get poor around midnight so I'm getting close to that you know another hour or so so yeah I may get I may get partially clouded out here until about three in the morning so I'm lucky to get anything in it looks like huh. chase a comet or two 
Yeah. Hi, Jim. Hi, Tom. Hey, Doug. You guys are being recorded, just letting you know. Oh, okay. hello, evening, world. Evening, Tom. <laughs> and then for now the TV comes back on. <laughs> Jim in Iowa. Where have you been, my man? He's not talking tonight. Oh, yeah. I tell you what, I have got the clearest cloud, the clearest skies. I, have, I love that. I love that Freudian slip. I've got the clearest clouds out. I mean, they're <laughs> so clear, I can't even see them. There's not a, there's not a sky in the cloud. Is that correct? It's not a, I, not a sky in the cloud. It's beautiful out tonight. I'm on, I'm on M42 right now, and it's, it's phenomenal. I got I got like ten minutes before it's in the trees. Maybe not even that much. I probably should just go ahead and stop it. Well, probably should. This is what I'm shoot. This is what I'm shooting through right now. You know, if you live any further north, Doug, somebody would say, "Oh, that's a uh, uh, faint aurora." No. You know. That's for, clouds. That's, but, that's serious clouds. <laughs> I've actually, you know, the, the the few times we got aurora down here, like two, three in the morning, and I do like a ten second exposure, of a, you know, pretty wide, and you'll see like that, right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. you realize, like, hang on, from picture to picture, all of a sudden, wait, that's high cirrus there, and you could, because you could see it moving, shot to shot. And I said, the, the, the more, they're almost more structured here. The, I said, the really faint stuff. I said, that's, that's an aurora. Oh, and I think the coolest, the coolest part is to see the aurora behind the cirrus clouds. Well, that's where they're at. Yeah, no, I mean. But it, as, that, they move, it, it, as they it, move it, through, it, I've got, I, got, I got a couple, maybe two or three shots where you can see that. And, uh. I mean, you don't. Okay. Sometimes you can't see those high cirrus up in my dark site. I can't see that high those high cirrus clouds until they're they're illuminated from the backside with aurora. <laughs> can, can I ask? We, a we have Toronto. We have Toronto for that. <laughs> I need to Blake. ask. I need to ask a question. Yeah. Okay. So on sharp cap, if you have stacking selected, sigma clipping. If your last frame has a jet that flies through it, the sub sigma clipping doesn't it cancel that last frame? I don't have an answer for you because I don't use sharp cap. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over to John's broadcast and ask Chris. Yeah. Okay. Because I had a guy fix my computer today and he changed that setting and he told me that would fix that. So let me go ask Chris. Yeah, George, I'm only uh, broadcasting just enough for your for your monitor, just for you. <laughs> for my monitor? <laughs> yeah, your little 19-inch monitor you said you had. Yep. Actually, that this little 19-inch monitor is the bigger of the, the two because the, what is that, a 17, 17-inch laptop? Mm -hmm. Although, albeit, the, the, that's a 1920 by... 1200 whatever like the laptop a is a much higher res it's a 1080 but yeah. yeah but when you but when i plug in the second monitor which is this one here the 19 it level sets the two i i believe there's some kind of negotiation and so they both go down to 720p yeah and and i i noticed that because uh i go as soon as I unplug the second guy, wham, you know, it's back to squinting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, well, my age, squinting, magnifying glass, and, you know, mega, you know, all the 
what do you call those? The bookmark tabs at the top. You got about five or six more because it's such a high resolution now. And yeah, yeah. But that's okay. That's okay. No, this is good enough because you know what? You lean back two, three feet. I mean, there it is. So nice 2403. 2403 is, is that actually a barred spiral in the middle? No. No, it's just that a looks spiral. Like a proper. And it's not that far away. It's only 8 million light years. Only. Yeah. Just, uh, two and a half times Andromeda. Actually, on that note, what size is it then? Just relatively I think, kicking. Uh, it's, well, this, this field of view you're seeing is... Uh, 30 arc or 27 arc minutes uh, from top to bottom. Okay, it's half a degree. So it's about a, a little less than a quarter degree, probably. That's still a, that's a big galaxy. Mm -hmm. Now it's just near the core, and I and I know there's a bunch of stars there in sequence. Let me see here. Uh, Actually, it's 23 arc minutes by 11 arc minutes. So, yeah. In fact, if on uh, my screen, at least, I can see out. There's a, uh, You can kind of see the uh, galaxy extends out about half the field of view, uh, heading from uh, a 1 o'clock position to the uh, 7 o'clock position. I think that's the long, long way at 23 arc minutes. So it's actually... What you're, the core in the middle is is only about half the diameter of the entire galaxy. So it's got some it's got some length. This is one of those that I'd have to probably take about six to twelve hours to get some details out on the perimeter. But not not looking through this this um, high haze I've got. I'm not going to be able to get those wispiness tonight. What what scope cam is this? That's my 10 inch. Oh, it's the 071 camera. Okay, 071, 10 inch, F4 ish. F, F8. Eight. Eight. Okay. Yeah, you like to go deep. Good. Yeah, I mean, I go after stuff most people doing wide field won't bother with. Uh, mostly because I like galaxies. I just think they're, I think they're fun. I actually like them better than nebulas. <laughs> One of the things I used to do, I still do, as a matter of fact, is whatever scope I'm using in under a given sky, is I, I try to find the dimmest galaxies I can see that night. Great. Then Leo, Leo one should not be a problem for you. <laughs> really? Oh God. Actually, where is Regulus right now? It's not even. Yeah, it's up off. There. It. No, it's, off. it's off. It's quite a ways off in the east right now. So. But that, that I have to admit was, whew, yeah. how faint that was. I know two people got it. It was Mark George in New Zealand and uh, Dave of San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco. And I mean, it took some work. It's only 12 arc minutes or something from regular, so you've got that blazing whatever it is, mag zero, and here's this thing which is like minus, I mean mag like 12 or something. getting lost here. Jesus. How to center this. Zoom in. There we go. So 
this must be the galaxy you're talking about right there. You said it's only 12 arc lights. I, I, yeah, I, I'd know it if I saw it. It is, uh, what do they call it? I think, I, I think if they call it an irregular dwarf, very faint. It, you know what? It actually looks like a, uh, <coughs> a globular cluster, extremely faint. It is elongated. That representation there looks interesting, but I guess that's just what that is. And it, I guess it's got other numbers. Is it? And it, what's the info? Does it have at some point? It should say Leo one. Well, or, it's it's PGC. It's a PGC. It's a galaxy. It's thirteen yeah. point one magnitude. Sounds about right. It transits and, and, at eleven thirty tonight. And if you measure. I think it's like 12, 12, 14 arc minutes away. Because I know people have to, <laughs> you, you literally, it's, it's like doing all the tag, right? You have to hide, yep. hide Regulus off right there. And then you can just, just bring it out. It, it's such a delicate fainting. The stars are so tiny to make the thing up. It's, it's good. kind of cool looking. I think Don, uh, Philadelphia, he, he brought up, he actually got a smudge, and you could see it. And he was in pretty deep, too, I think. But he had a hazy night, so there's no way that was going to show up. And so this, yeah, I've, I've got a image and, online. Well, well, wait, wait, does it give you a distance? That's the. I think it's only 800,000 light years away. That's the other thing, right? So if that's what's the distance on that PGC that you had? Oh, uh, let me see here. Eight Yeah. Eight hundred thousand light years, I think. It was something like that. So Can't that, be eight hundred light years, right? Because that's that would be well, ah. eight, even eight hundred thousand light years would be just outside our, uh, not even. Oh, that's what I mean. So like it's not even halfway it to, to Andromeda. Out, it's outside. Well, yeah, it's a weird, you know, irregular dwarf. Dwarf. That's the word. It's it's a dwarf dwarf galaxy. Yeah, I've got a. I've seen a. I I just found a picture of it. So I'm trying to determine if that PGC I'm looking at is what we're talking about, and I don't think it is. Uh, let me see here. Well, they, if that representation is correct, well, what happens if you zoom in some more? <laughs> well, this, I remember this that's, I, that's only about 12 or 14 arc minutes from Regulus. That's, that's where it lives. Yeah. And I can't remember if there's any, anything like that in the vicinity, but you'll know, I mean, you can't, It's the weirdest thing. Everything is so bright, and then all of a sudden you see this faint little reddish, uh, almost like, you know, the Omega Centauri cluster burning out, you know, just fading out, you know, and go, oh, yeah, look at that, you know. Like, literally, the stars, when you look at are like, well, never mind the you, core of this galaxy, but if, like like the outer core, the outer, the outer arms, that's how faint the thing is, right? Except that it's yellow, red, it, well, reddish. Don't forget, I'm colored shade challenged, but kind of orangey, yellowy, reddish, more reddish than anything. Hmm. No, it took two guys, two, three guys, a uh, couple of days and tries to get, to get it. To view it or to image it? Oh, to actually, actually be able to bring it out. Like, you know, you set it up and couldn't get it. And then uh, part of, a lot of the problem is getting Regulus out of the way and kind of picking your picking your field of view poison mm -hmm. would be the best way to describe it. Because, let's see, uh, this is probably a good field of view for it because you could put... Regulus up 
in the corner up there, right? Just off you. And then Leo would one would be sort of in the middle, and it would be close to what maybe half the size of this guy, roughly. Yeah, I'm trying to find some more details other than just pictures of it. I've got pictures of it online here I'm looking at. And it's really, like you said, it's really close to it's, regulars. It's actually, okay, wait. It would be, oh, I don't even know how to describe that astronomically because it's down and to the right of regulus in proper orientation. So that would be, that would be, east southeast of it <laughs> technically i guess let's see here yeah you can't post the uh, yeah you can't post the uh, pictures here has to be a link. Right? I wonder if I have. I'm. I, oh, I I've got. I've got a Mark. picture online here. I could show you if you wanted to see yeah, it. I was just trying to, you know, Mark. Mark in New Zealand when his shot. I mean, his shot was as good as the reference shots that you probably have on Wiki or something, right? I mean, it's not. Yeah, because the thing's so faint that it's. Uh, Here's here's an example. Let's see. All right. There's an example right there. With Regulus on top and Leo one right below it. That's yeah, and if you clip Regulus in half, that's what Mark almost pretty well had. Uh, except yeah, that I don't know if his he brought out Leo one quite as well, but it is you know it's elliptical and it is a dwarf, mm -hmm. and and I honest to God if you were actually looking at it you'd say oh that's uh you you'd think it was like a, a cluster right an open uh, yeah a it might look like cluster. A, yeah it might look like that yeah there's no defined core or anything it's just sort of dwarfish. <laughs> it is. I, I don't know. Bit, that thing can't be that big, you know. Right. Considering, if if it really is only eight hundred thousand light years out, only. Yeah. <laughs> Look at my cloud cover here. I'll take another snapshot of the sky. I got my ten millimeter lens on my Canon camera, piggybacked on the ten inch. So I got a kind of a wide field of what's uh, it's a partial, all, not an all sky, but a partial sky camera. It's what I'm using to keep track of the sky conditions. I'm looking through haze right now. I have been for an hour. Oh, that's getting worse too. Yeah, it's getting it's getting worse. Oh, I was going to ask. That uh, reminded me, you being in the Upper Peninsula there, the uh, no, I'm not uh, in the Upper Peninsula. Well, Flint. Uh, oh. It's north of me. Okay. <laughs> Call it. You didn't get... Did you have skies? There was that slight auroral activity. Uh, no, we, uh, we got Saturday, no... Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, we got no aurora down here. Yeah, it was... It, it was... It was not that big. It was nothing. Yeah. No, we didn't get anything. Churchill, prob of course, probably did, but that's because they're 1,200 miles northwest of me. Yeah. And you, and you, well, actually, they're almost, yeah, same for you. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, it's, I'm still collecting data, so I, I'm not shutting this off yet, but. I'm looking through really crummy skies right at the moment. Oh, this 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 is my this is my where I'm looking at right now. Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> that is that that. 
what what amazes me is Jared has done exactly what you're doing here now too. He show me kind of a shot like that, and he can't even see a star. And he's like pulling out what like you are mag. There's you've got mag fourteen fifteens in there, don't you? Oh yeah, easy. And and pinpoint, and that's either your polar polar alignment and or your tracking combined. That's just holding whatever photons get through they're not leaving that pixel no it's... you're you're less than a pixel tracking aren't you I'll, yeah i'll bet I'll yeah bet. yeah i am <clears throat> my uh ra is half an arc second my deck is less than half an arc second which is less than my seeing so No, the systems worked worked great last night. I, I went to bed. I, I started up uh, M98 last night. Oh, I don't know. About midnight, maybe. I don't remember. Maybe it was 1130. I went to bed at 1230, and I had M51 as the next one in the sequence. And it finished up M98 around 2 o'clock, slewed over to M51, centered it, and did uh, started M51 at, what was it, 2 or 3? I guess it was three o'clock. I, I got three hours of 98 and two hours of M51. Anyhow, so I came down here at 7.30 this morning and scope was parked. Uh, the last frame of M51 was taken at, uh, I think it was 5.20 this morning. And uh, everything worked flawlessly, when it, even though I went to bed. And that was kind of the purpose. That way I maximize what clear weather I do have. It isn't dependent on me to be awake. That was the whole point behind this automation. And I've been able to do that several nights over the last year. You know, just sort of queue up three or four objects and go to bed. It'll do the meridian flip and recenter, grab a auto guiding star and continue on. It's amazing I'm actually getting any data whatsoever through that cloud cover. Let me see what the raw data looks like here. <laughs> yeah, let's stretch it and see. Yeah, see? This is what the raw data looks like. Background is really bright. I'm going to stretch this so I can see it a little bit. But that's what that galaxy looks like after five minutes in the in the current sky conditions. Barely there. And then we stack the heck out of it. I'll have to work this one again on a better night. Maybe next weekend when I go up to my place up north, I'm gonna. I, if the weather's good, I'm gonna go up for a week. I'll set the system up up there for for the week. If I if it looks like I'll have a three or four clear nights over that eight eight days. Yeah, go after this again. So I'm doing this in Portal 5 skies here. 4 slash 5. Oh, I forgot to turn that guy off. Let me turn that off. Actually, that doesn't look too bad considering what I'm looking through. Oh, it looks good. Is it any better to the north, or is it all over? Oh, I I don't know. I can't. I'm not gonna move. I can't move the scope 
right now, but that's my north shot right now. I'll take another preview. Eric, who's over in Kalamazoo, said he clouded up already. So that's why I'm expecting clouds to come in. He's about 100 and, I don't know, about 100 miles to my west, southwest. Maybe not even 100 miles. It's one of my uh, long-term astronomy friends. Known him since the 70s. Can't ID any of the stars <laughs> in the clouds there. You got one at the very top. Edge. That thing on the that asterism on the left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't I? Uh, no. Oh wait. Uh, okay. Zoom in. Oh oh oh. Uh, Draco head. Yeah, I think that is. Wait a minute. That looks like it might be. Yeah. Uh, Well then, clouds. Wow. I mean, let's look at the west here, north. We look north. Um, that's my false horizon there. upside down and backwards <laughs> yeah but this is looking north and then if we look off to the northwest which is to the left side here um, that would be I don't know I don't know Well, that's a little dipper on the top. And over to the left is, because I'm looking um, northwest and right up high, so. But that's the sky I got right now. I'm shooting this galaxy through that sky there. <laughs> That's what you call being guy, being yeah, guy here. Astro smog. Yeah. If I can still collect photons, I will. I'll know I'm done when my guide star disappears on me. <laughs> when, An interesting experiment, just for a frame, yep. uh, would be stop your guiding, like keep your tracking running, but you know you're gonna. Within the course of an exposure, probably uh, shift a pixel or two, right? So you're not. <laughs> this image would change dramatically. All those little mag 14, 15 stars would kind of like disappear. No, they wouldn't disappear. The ones that are there already would stay. The ones that you collect would show up in a different position and may not may not be seeable on that next frame. So. But the ones that are there well, are, are fine just because if you did an A B, just one exposure versus yeah, the other compared one. to this versus a fresh new one where it says no, no, no. You know, one minute exposure, thirty seconds on one pixel, but it then it they drifted to the next one over. Oh, so I know it's basically starting. I, I know it, I, I know exactly what that's gonna look like. <laughs> mm-hmm. This, this is just rem just remarkable, like, you're pulling this out through that. Yeah, I, when I publish this tomorrow after my processing, I'm going to show you guys the galaxy, and then I'm going to show you this picture of what I, I was shooting through. <laughs> and you guys are going to go. You can enhance that one, too, to make it more dramatic. You know? Oh, I know. Give it that let's see an end view, I call it. I just brighten it up and then like really intensify the clouds and go holy smokes there how's that yeah exactly right there 
Look at that. And it's like, how did he do that? <laughs> well, oh, if you look, if you look at the, if you look at the current ones, you can tell it's. This is a, this is the current frame. You can tell the sky is pretty bright. <laughs> and I can barely see the core of this galaxy. All right. That's that's a single frame, a single raw frame right there. <clears throat> it's really cool what you can do with digital imaging. What Matt just said. Actually, the background sky is just going to get brighter. On uh, this image, because I'm getting more and more of a more and more coverage. Take another preview here. That also shows you some of the light pollution I have to my north. Those clouds are being illuminated by uh, the towns north of me. Fenton is about seven miles, seven, eight miles north of me, and then Flint's 20 miles north of me. You know, anytime you get clouds like that, it's a nice, a nice glow to the north. dark patch there now and this next frame actually should be a little better Twenty miles south of Flint. All right, Robert, take care. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just letting this run until I can't guide on anything anymore. Once I can't guide, I, I know I'm washed out for the night. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot people have to go to bed and get up to work tomorrow. Not all of us. I know. <coughs> Not I. Do you see my M51 from last night, Tom? Uh, no. In fact, I'm working on M51 right now. I did not. Uh, what is is it on Facebook or? Yeah, yeah. What I decided to do last night was uh, um, I did M98 and M51, two hours on M51, and then in the morning I took my for, for the first time I took some flats and applied them, and I was surprised how 
nice uh, job they did, the flats did on, on uh, those two objects last night. I mean, basically took most of the gradients out, the uh, vignetting and, and my dust donuts. Yeah, that looks good. Doesn't have, it doesn't have the hours I've had on it previously, but that background's pretty flat. Yeah, it looks that looks really good. And I actually pushed the background to see if I could see any. Uh, you know, I've got the vertical noise, but my my goal was did the flats that I the first time I took flats, I I, I set the or just turned, slewed the scope to the west, blue sky this morning when the sun was about 15 degrees up. And I took 31 one thousandths of a second exposures for flats. I says, let me see if this does anything, because I had never taken flats before. And I was pleasantly surprised at how well it did. Yeah. Even though the flats were kind of bluish, not even white, it didn't matter. So I'll have to figure out a way to do that when it's not a nice homogeneous sky. <laughs> Makes me wish I'd been doing that for the last two years. Because I've been fighting gradients and dust donuts for 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 the last two years. Yeah, I've I have I have a flat, a master flat in there from the other night, and I tried it. And I went to M55, M56, and then the the other galaxy a little bit to the left. I tried to get those three in there, and it, it just started dropping frames. So I took the, I took it out, and so now I'm gonna try to put it back in. But I. My first two frames on M51 look really good. Last night was a pretty good night. One of the other people on my YouTube channel right now, he just said he's in Fenton as well, so he's looking at the same crummy skies I am. <laughs> uh, uh, the other thing I did, uh, Tom, I don't think you knew this, but I got that IR cut filter off my camera. Oh, yeah, you told me you went to the camera shop. Yeah, yeah, you got that off. And so I, I've, I now, re, I, mo I, I had 24 millimeters of offset to the camera from the on-axis guiding port. All I've done is I moved that filter from the first, being the first unit off of the camera, to being the first unit off the on-axis. So I've got 24 millimeters of space now, further, further in towards the on-axis. Right. So the donuts or the dust particles that are on that filter. Are, don't even show up now on the camera. So I've eliminated two two optical surfaces that were giving me dust on it. Yeah, I I meant to pull my camera off and go in and try cleaning the the outer lens or the lens cell, whatever that outer glass is. Yeah, the AR the AR lens. Yeah, and I just. I just got lazy tonight. I thought, well, shoot, I'm just going to go ahead and set up. And, but, I mean, I got these two dust donuts in there that, the this flat. Well, not the flat, the dark. Was that a flat or a dark, or did I put that in the wrong spot? Oh man, I may be. I need to go back and look at that again. I think I may have upset the cookie bar. Oh, okay. Let me try taking that out of there. Can't really tell. But we'll let it run. Well, I managed to clean all the optical surfaces. I got a lot of the dust donuts gone but they're just going to be coming back i just have to re i just have to figure out a way to automate the flats now yeah well, i started dropping frames again so i'm gonna to restart this take the flats out and see what i can do i don't i hate i hate to it looks so good i better i better save it just in case
Not bad for three frames. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I think I may have cleared it too soon. The next frame that came in, it accepted it. So I must have something wrong with that flat that I took from the other night. I think that was my problem. Hi, Dave. Oh, so let's see here. Maybe I can get a big enough t-shirt to put over the end of my scope. Let me just use the sky as my light source. <laughs> That's what this morning's flats were without a t-shirt. I just pointed at my blue sky that was cloudless this morning and took a 30 frames. And it, it worked. <laughs> Took a thousand, one one thousandth of a second frames. And I don't know. Well, that, so that's my reference point. One one thousandth of a second at a gate of 300 in a blue sky. <laughs> Hey Dave, I'm going to show you what sky what the sky looks like that I'm shooting through right now. Hi Mark. How do you like that? I had to figure out which channel I was you were on so I could answer you on that channel. <laughs> I'm kind of surfing here. Yeah. So that's the sky I'm shooting through right now. <laughs> Gray skies here. How's it down your way? Yeah. Hey, he Dave. He can actually show you. He can actually show you that wide shot. Hey, Dave, can you hear us? Nope. Uh oh. David? I got it. Hello, Dave? No. I can hear you. Oh, you're messing with me. Can you see this image, Dave? Gray sky. Yes. Gray sky. That, that, that's the sky I'm shooting through. That's getting worse. Hey, it is getting worse. I know. <laughs> that's, that's twice as bad as 20 minutes ago. I just stuck my hat and stick my head out. It is actually still remarkably crystal crystal clear well for for here <laughs> you know see all the mag one mag two stars yeah Ryan, south south over the lake lake ontario I just realized part of my confusion. Flint and Pontiac. How far is Pontiac from Flint, Michigan? Oh, 25, 30 miles. Okay, so like if I was in Sarnia, uh, the direct drive would be pretty much the same to either spot. What do you mean? If you were no, to. Yeah, if you're going from, say, Sarnia, Port Huron, towards Pontiac or Flint, it would be, which one would you hit first? Well, Flint has got more, is more direct. It's a, the, the Port Huron to Flint is I-69 the whole way, so it's more direct. Pontiac, you'd have to, you'd have to shoot down M to M-59 and come across, probably would be the better way from, you take 94 
south to M59 and then take that across the, to Pontiac. So it'll be a, it might be shorter, it might be about the same distance, but it'll actually take you a little longer because it's not full freeway the whole way. Just do a Google map on it. Yeah, it might have a little little hole here. I should go stand outside and see what the sky looks like. <clears throat> Let's see here, which one do I want? Okay. Let's pop this back up here. As long as I gonna I have a guide camera, guide star going, I'm gonna keep collecting data on this. Unless the another part of the sky is opened up that I don't wear up, so I'm going to step outside and see uh, see what the uh, weather the uh, sky conditions are. I know to the northwest it's not so good, but maybe it's better in another part of the sky. I'll be right back. The entire sky looks like that. So, <laughs> I don't know if it's even worth continuing. I can barely see uh, Sirius. But it's just data. Okay, ghost.
I don't know. I don't have probably don't have enough contrast for this to get any better. So this trans yeah, transparency is going to get worse for the next, I don't know, three hours. It's supposed to start getting better around three o'clock in the morning. So. Well, everybody's left my uh, YouTube channel, so I'm going to close that.